We're in western Nebraska. We're just out of the Colorado line into Nebraska. We're in Clay's stomping grounds. Uh, Clay Owens runs Prairie Ghost Outfitters and uh, he's got a lot of leases for deer and he's just got, he's built up some great relationships with landowners and, and we're gonna be hunting these places these landowners want these coyotes managed. I've been out locating a lot to make sure that we have quality spots to hunt with coyotes in them. Um, anybody that knows me knows that my biggest thing is locating coyotes. I only try to hunt where I've made a lot of contact with coyotes. Yeah, I don't really like cold calling. I, I like to do my homework. I like to make sure that we're gonna be calling where there's coyotes. This is the first time I'll have my dogs by themselves. I mean, before I had them with Jeff's dogs, and I'm hoping these idiots will prove us that they, in two years, they're ready to go. We'll see. Plain fact of the matter is, I don't know if my dogs are ready to go solo or not. I've been working the dogs for the last two weeks in Utah, trying to get them in shape for this trip. I'm, I'm really excited to watch the dogs work, watch them in their environment, see if uh, see if these coyotes will, will come charging in and, and chase the dogs around. It, it'll make a really exciting episode for sure. Anytime you get to watch a good dog work, it's, it's cool. What a privilege. Coyote come, coming off the hill. Got a coyote right here. It's going right to the dogs. Oh, Teddy's on him. He's gonna work them. He is. They're gonna work. They're running this coyote all over. Hey Clay, you shooting when you get a chance right there. Right there, he's separated. Oh. <laughs> nice job. Sweet man, he went right down. I was really nervous. It was our first morning. It was our first coyote. Teddy was so amped that I think Teddy worked the coyote more than the coyote worked Teddy. I think them dogs don't love what they do. <laughs> Look at this. Take him back to the truck, Ted. <laughs> We're gonna go do it again. They've got the dogs tuned in. We're ready. <laughs> They're ready to go find some more. What are you doing? Excuse me. Better vantage? What? Get down. Dogs listen really well. There's one right out there by that dark shadow. Yeah, just left of the dark shadow. I see him. Yeah. How far is that? 1,150 yards. He's coming now, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to jump that calf. He's going right to that calf. He is. Look at that. He jumped up there. Yeah. He's leaving. There's a truck coming in there. That's the stuff you can't predict, Clay. The rancher's gonna come check his cows at the precise time we got a coyote working. Yeah. Let's go find one that wants to play. It's, gonna, it's getting warm now. Straight above you, right along the fence line, just right to the right a little bit. I think we're too far away. Good reaction. Wish a stupid wind would die down. You know, what really got us a little nervous is they're hanging up four, five, six hundred yards. They're not closing the gap. We're gonna just need to get closer to them, make them mad. Let's go call this white dog in, Kyle. We were on a stand, it was overlooking this great valley. Ow. There's two coyotes all the way across the draw in the red grass. And sure enough, these two coyotes come from out there past these cows. They're gonna end up right over here. Yeah, good girl. 
They get about 300 yards. We should have shot them. Rita runs out there to them and they take off. Look at that coward run. Yeah, look at that. We better shoot that one, Clay. You got him, Code? 389. 400. Get him running there, Clay. They will not engage the dogs. I don't know what their deal is. We're gonna figure it out. Me and Clay are gonna talk about it this afternoon. Uh, we're gonna show you some more coyotes and we're gonna figure out how to get these coyotes in closer. So stay with us. You know, we came out to Nebraska to dog coyotes. It's the first week of June. Uh, it's supposed to get hot. They've had a lot of rain and the rain stopped, the temperatures are rising. We're just hoping that the dog gets as hot as the temperatures. We're probably gonna be hitting the, the high 70s to mid 80s during the midday, so we're not gonna get a chance to make a lot of stands. If it gets over 64 degrees, it's tough on the dogs, tough on the coyotes, so uh, as long as it's 40, 50 degrees, we're fine. Anything above that, it's gonna get tough. This is our second full morning here in Nebraska. We're going into kill mode. They're not working the dogs. They're kind of getting hinky at distance, so we're gonna take the long, we're gonna stretch the riflings on these barrels. These guys want these coyotes removed, so we're gonna start getting after them. There are sounds on the Fox Pro that you better have when you go field dogging. Uh, those sounds are the howls, the actual coyote howls, the new female sore howl, um, male howl, female yodel, open the stands with that. Then you gotta go to canine pups tube, uh, coyote pup screams, and coyote pup distress three. Tried, proven, American made. Quality still exists in the USA and it's right there on your Fox Pro. I got some intel on some coyotes from a landowner that I've done a lot of predator control for. In fact, when I moved back to Nebraska, the first thing he asked me, he didn't even ask me how I was doing. He just asked if I was still calling coyotes. Farmer said he's selling the same three coyotes out there in this, by this tractor. At 120 yards, Grita sees the coyote coming, runs down there to engage the coyotes. The coyotes take off. Oh, they're not gonna work the dog at all. Cody, the cameraman, had to move, re-engage the camera, but that one coyote made a mistake. They got a reference off a piece of equipment. He's 10 feet left of the white piece of metal. <laughs> nice shot, Clay. Dude, that was an awesome shot. 257 yards. If it wasn't for that piece of metal, we'd have never been able to see him. I couldn't, I couldn't have been able to tell Cody where he where was. was that? Good job, guys. What we're finding is they are not working the dogs. That pair has a den right there somewhere, and they did not work the dogs at all. We're gonna just start, we gotta start stretching the riflings on these Rugers, and, and uh, we're gonna let the dogs try and work. We got one to work the other day. It's time, they should work, they're not. They didn't howl last night. Uh, we had good intel on this this pair here, and and uh, we got one of them killed, and we're glad you're along. Fur takers here in Nebraska, Clay Owens. Heck of a shot, dude. Well, this week we got a special opportunity to go to the Hornady Manufacturing Plant in Grand Island, Nebraska, and it's just awesome. Today I'm gonna to show the guys from Fox Pro around. We're gonna take a look at ammo and bullets, manufacturing, packaging, and uh, hopefully you guys will have some fun. The products that you guys get to use all kind of start here with the tools that we make in-house. This is how we control a lot of our quality. This is where we're actually rebuilding our equipment. You can't go out and buy a bullet press. You at least to make the, it. We gotta tailor it to our needs. Hornady was founded by Joyce Hornady in 1949. And we've always been in Grand Island. This is our sole location. And uh, everything we make here is make as far as ammunition and projectiles is made here in America. Obviously bullets, bullets start with copper and lead, and then a tip if they got one. So this is how we receive our raw lead, right here in these 100 pound blocks. From there, we drop it in antimony pots. So they take the molten lead and they pump it into our billet dies. So then they'll take these billets to the extruder. These are the big cylinders pushing it up, squirting out lead spaghetti, essentially. It's, it's unbelievable. 
The feeling I had walking through the Hornady plant is the same feeling I got when I walked through the Fox Pro plant. You see hardworking Americans uh, busting their butts, taking pride in what they do, and making the best ammunition on the planet. When I say Hornady, send me more ammo, this is where it's happening, right here. This is 22 250, uh, 50 grain super performance ammo. You realize I probably shoot that all in a year. And that's become my favorite ammunition, that 50 grain super performance. It was 4,000 foot a second and it absolutely crushes the coyotes. Oh, I'll bet. Crushes them. Yeah. So. And what she's doing there is she's just double checking them in a chamber gauge. Just there you one go. One more check. So if they fit in that chamber gauge, then you're the charge are going your gun. Exactly. Yeah. They're looking, hand inspecting every single round of ammunition that goes out of here. Any you know folds or fingerprints or anything is going to get pulled and go into seconds. The the ammunition that goes into our box is definitely top quality. Five shots. Five shots at 100 yards. It doesn't get any better than that. Right here in the good old USA. It's fun to shoot Hornady ammo. It's accurate, deadly, dependable. That's all you need to know, and the people here are doing it right. We're dogging coyotes in western Nebraska. The temperatures are rising, but we're seeing coyotes. Hey, Al, is that, is that a coyote right out there on that hill? I think it is. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what about Clay Owens. He's got a set of eyes on him. He looks out there and goes, is that a coyote? Man, I pulled up my binox. I said, oh yeah, it's a coyote. It's kind of odd, that coyote out there. I'll bet there's a den somewhere in there. I bet there is. By the cottonwoods or something. Yep, I bet you're right. Let's do it. All right. Talk to see him. We cut the distance about 100 yards, sat down. I went into a couple howls. The dogs take off, both dogs, and they run that coyote over the hill. They're running them out. Dang it, come here, dogs. I turned on pup screams, and this coyote comes screaming off the hill. She's going out here in the bottom. She's behind the hill. Dude, she's gonna come out here. There she is, just left of the oh, left, just of, the left of the green bushes. Smoked her. Well, about then Greta shows back up, and then Teddy comes over the hill. Here they come, over the top of the big hill. Is over that the top of the big hill? Is that That's is two, that two coyotes? Two coyotes on Ted. They're coming hard, boy. They are wearing him out. Come on, Teddy, I'll help you out, buddy. See him on the right? You on him? Okay. Right. Got the one on the left? We just Tripled right there, baby. I'm dogging triple. Boom, your brother. <laughs> Tripled up right here in Nebraska. They worked. It wasn't in our face barking action, but as you saw, it was cool. That is awesome. They're not properly dead until they're Ted dead. <laughs> That's not the dominant female. Oh, that's a male. That's a sub-adult male, I'll bet. I can Let's drag it. her over here. Come on, Freaking drag him over here. That's the other one. That's a so let's lay them out right here. That's, that's one, female. two. That's what we dream about, is these triples. Um, it doesn't happen very much. It's dogging, and for us to get a triple down, it's awesome. We're glad you're along. Fox Pro Fur Takers in Nebraska couldn't be happier. Clay Owens. Yeah. Are you gonna learn the dance? I don't know if I can move like that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Out here in Nebraska, I've got a mule deer hunting operation, and, and my goal is to grow big mule deer. I can't grow big deer if the coyotes are eating all my fawns. 
So springtime predator control is, is super critical. If we're out here knocking a few of these coyotes down and taking them out, it's gonna give us a, a higher survival rate for those fawns. There is places in the US where 70, 80% of the fawns are getting ate by coyotes. Don't let your coyotes eat your deer. Manage your coyotes. Come in and get the coyotes out of an area so they're not eating your fawns. Hey guys, we got a coyote right here in the bottom. Clay, how far is that? 350. You see him? Good shot, Ooh, dude. Baby. Awesome. I just, I put the precision right where I thought it needed to be, and that coyote went down in a heap. And it's a testament to the, the bullets, it's a testament to the gun, it's a testament to the scope. Of course, we're shooting off bog pods, which is the finest rest you can get. But uh, it's confidence to take that Ruger precision, dump a coyote at 350 that's not working the dogs, it's awesome. They ain't gonna work the dogs, so we're gonna do what the rancher's mandate. We're gonna get out here and hammer some coyotes. Last day in the morning, we got a pair. We think it's all a den, we're gonna go try and call them in. There's a coyote up by them cows. There's a second one. Them two coyotes get together and start howling. They see the dog, Teddy. They would not close a distance, and I, I could have shot, but he was on the skyline. And the fact there were so many cattle up there. You want to get kicked off a place, shoot a cow. Um, just don't do it. They ain't going to come any closer. I don't want to shoot them on that skyline. Coyote. Coyote right at the top of the hill. Nice <laughs> shot, Clay Owens. Clay Owens, nice job, nice shot. These guns are awesome. No. Booyah, brother! <laughs> we went in and set up on a place, and 30 seconds into it, Clay goes, there's two right there. 400 yards out, right over the white post. I see them. Look at him, I'm gonna do female sore howl. They're howling. I'm gonna do coyote canine pups here. Here they come. They're gonna try to cut the wind on us. Got a little ways to go before they get our wind out. The first one's leaving. You got that? One on the left? <laughs> that second one. Dang it. We only got one of the two, but they were howling. That was awesome. It's confidence to take that Ruger Precision, dump a coyote at 350 that's not working the dogs. It's awesome. Overall, we had a really awesome hunt. We, we called in a lot of coyotes. We got to watch the dogs work a little bit. Had to kill a bunch of them at two, three, 400 yards, but the fact that we get to come chase coyotes the first week of June, that's what it's about. Come do this one time, you'll be hooked. I know you will.